All right, so let's demonstrate compound masks with an actual image so that we can see compound masks in action. Here we have this raw image. Obviously, the foreground is underexposed and the sky is a little bit overexposed. So let's try to brighten up the foreground here. So once again, if you use the shadows adjustment, the result is decent, but maybe that's not what you want. Maybe you'd want some other brightening operation like an exposure. But you can see that it doesn't work out, right? So this is where there's a situation where you want to mask. Before we go into compound masks, let's just make some minor adjustments. What I'm going to do here is just have one operation in develop persona and that's reduce the highlights. All right, so that looks fine. Obviously, the exposure adjustment doesn't work properly for us here. We need to use masks in order to target our adjustment right here in the foreground. Let's do that by going to Photo Persona. So I'm going to click on Develop. Let's start off editing this image by adding in an adjustment layer. So I'm just going to click on the Adjustments button here. I'm going to just choose the Exposure Adjustment. There you go. So the exposure adjustment appears here at the top. So there's two places the exposure adjustment can be placed. You can place it at the top of this background image, you, or you can place it as a sub layer of this, this image. All right? So the difference is if it is a sub layer, then this adjustment just works on the, this particular image, not on the layers uh, beneath it. Right. But anyway, let's just keep it here at the top as a default. So let's just adjust the exposure now to our liking. It worked pretty well exposing the foreground, but of course it blew out the, the sky, right? Which is not what we want. So we need a mask to mask out the sky. What we're going to do here is we're going to add in a mask, right? So the mask we're going to be using here is a luminosity range mask because this foreground is pretty dark. So let's just add that in. But since I know that I'll probably need more than one mask to get a good result, I'm going to add the compound mask first. So before I add the luminosity mask, I'm just going to click on compound mask here. Right? So it appears to the right of the adjustment. It can also be placed below if you click on by clicking on this button here so that you can see it a little bit clearer, right? So there's two views of this compound mask. It could appear like this. I find it it's easier to work with if I just put it below here so I don't get confused. So I find that or this configuration is better than this configuration. Okay, so now that I have the compound mask here, let's add the luminosity mask. So I'm just going to put in a luminosity range mask here like so. All right, so as you can see, the luminosity range mask was not placed inside the compound mask. So what you need to do is to make sure it is inside the compound mask or it is a sub layer of the compound mask. So you can just drag it into the compound mask. And here you can see that it is actually inside now. So if I hide the sub layers, you see that it is hiding. So it means it is inside the compound mask, which is what we want. So I can rename this. I'll just call this thing foreground. All right, so let's take a look at the mask now. Let's create a mask to target this darker portion here. So I'm going to just click on preview. And then I'm just going to drag it like so. So we set the curve to be in this form so that the darker areas will be in white, which is what we want because we want to target our adjustment on the foreground, on the darker areas, right? So as you can see from this, it is doing a proper job, but maybe we can just brighten it up a little bit. So we can adjust this curve now to brighten this mask, right? So the adjustment will really take effect. Now we want to darken the sky so that this portion here will not be affected. So what you want is the foreground to be totally white and the sky to be totally black. 
but as you can see, there is a limit to how much we can darken the sky. So even if I lower this by a lot, you see, it, there is a limit. So as you can see, it does not darken the entire sky, right? But this is a pretty good mask. Let's just see the effect. Okay, so I'm just going to do my exposure adjustment now. So you can see that it's not really great because while the foreground is being brightened, the sky is still being affected and it's washing out the sky. And that has to do with the mask that we've created. What we can do now is to add in a second mask to turn this sky area into black. So how do we do that? So let's create another luminosity mask here. Okay, we've created luminosity mask. Let's just add this inside the compound mask. I'm going to place this at the top of the foreground mask here. I'm, I'm just going to call this sky. All right, like so. And this time, we're going to be targeting the sky. So this sky should be in white, All right? So I'm just going to click on preview here. And let's just make this sky portion as bright as possible, right? So let's just do that. And this foreground here, let's just make this a little bit darker. All right, so that's the curve we can get, and that looks fine. So now we have the two masks, right? The first mask is this. The bottom mask looks like this, so we can option click on the thumbnail. Just click preview here. So this is the bottom mask. And then the top mask looks like that. Okay. Bottom mask. And the top mask. All right. So the next question there is what kind of operator should we use such that this foreground is going to be white while the sky is going to be black? So let's try first the default, which is the add. So right now it's set to add. So let's look at the result. So let's option click the compound mask to see the result. So this is the compound mask. So as you can see, it's mostly white because it has added the two tones together. So obviously add is not what we want. So the operator that we actually want is a subtract. From this mask, we are going to subtract this mask. So what we're going to get is a mask closer to what we desire. So let's just change now the operator to subtract. Right? So now it's at a subtract. Let's option click the compound mask here. And there you have it. So you can see now the sky is now more in black. Now there are still some imperfections, but it is much better than the previous example. And we can see that when we do our adjustment. Let's go ahead and do our adjustment now. And you can see that it's much better. So the sky is less affected, right? Like so. And because the masks are generated from the characteristics of an image, you're going to get a very accurate depiction because we did not do any manual brushing here. Now, as you can see here, it is still not perfect because this cloud here is still getting affected, right? Now, the good news here is the compound mask can, can be further edited. So let's look at the resulting compound mask first, like so, right? So what we want to do is get rid of this, this white area here to make our mask more perfect. So we can right click the compound mask and then just click edit mask right and then from here we can use our paint brush to just paint on this portion right here and so if we do our adjustment now now you can see it is now much more accurate well that's our video on compound masks do let me know if you use compound masks yourself, it is a very powerful feature of Affinity Photo. In fact, I don't know of any other editor which does it in this way. 
This is unique to Affinity Photo, but I am sure a lot of people were confused by this feature. And I really hope this video was helpful to you. This is just from my own tinkering with Affinity Photo and my knowledge of masking in general, right? So I hope you really found this video helpful. And if you did, I really appreciate if you like, subscribe, and share this content to help keep the videos coming. And till the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.